Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and we are continuing with my Japanese movie collection. First one tonight is a very popular one. It's a must for any uh, collector's collection of Japanese movies. And that is Ichi the Killer, the uncut duo edition. There's been multiple uh, releases of this movie over the years. This one I actually just bought recently to add to my collection, even though I saw the movie before. Now, this does include Ichi Origin, which is like a kind of a prequel to Ichi the Killer. It's kind of a lower budget, even lower budget film. <laughs> Almost looks like a made for television film that was not directed by Mike this time, but it was decent. I thought it was kind of interesting. But Ichi the Killer is the, the one to definitely get this DVD set for. Of course, directed by Takashi Miike. I'm going to review this uh, in my Takashi Miike filmography playlist that I will be beginning in a handful of months from now. So yeah, this movie is incredibly violent. You know, it's kind of a gangster flick about sadomasochism. And uh, there's actually quite a bit going on in this one. Even the people that like this movie sometimes don't give it the credit it deserves in terms of character development. So yeah, this is good. This is a very good movie. Special features on this is uh, audio commentary with Mike and manga artist Hideo Yamamoto. Not a whole lot more than that, but for uh, for the price, it's a pretty good value since you get a second film. All right. Got a bunch of horror movies coming up, so we'll whip through them because I've covered them or will cover them in my Asian horror playlist. This one is Infection from 2004. I remember the first time I watched this, I thought it was just pretty good, but then it, it grew on me after a repeat viewing. Again, this is kind of a uh, takes place in a hospital. You have a a corpse or a body that was already a corpse or turns into one that starts emanating a green ooze and a lot of weird stuff happens. Pretty creepy flick. You can check out my Asian horror video from 2004, I believe, for my thoughts on this one. Uh, I like the environments. It's got kind of an, uh, an interesting finale to it, a thought-provoking finale. Uh, on the surface, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, the ending to this movie, but I do think it's thought-provoking and, and quite interesting in... in in concept. Now, special features on this one is just basic stuff, subtitles. That's not a special feature. You know, why would you? Come on. You can't count that as a special feature. Now, this one is a an obscure horror film from Japan that I will cover, I think, when we get to 2013 in the Asian horror play this, and that is It's a Beautiful Day. This one stars Kopi Kim, who is a Korean actress, and she has been in a few... Uh, Japanese films. I know she was in one of Koji Shiraishi's films. I think it was A Record of Sweet Murder that uh, we will cover eventually as well. Yeah, this one is a pretty violent film. As you can tell by the back of it, the DVD cover. It's also kind of weird. It has its flaws, this one, but uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. I don't think it's available with subtitles, but I think the characters, actually, some of them talked in English in this movie. Because you have some Japanese people who pick up a Korean girl. So there has to be some English dialogue, from what I remember. I'll cover this later, though. Don't worry. Our next three films have been disappointments for me. All blind buys. The last two I blind bought just this last October. Japanese horror stories. This was right on Amazon. A U.S. release. No reviews of it, so I had no no basis to go off of, so I just blind bought it. Pretty cheap. It was a pretty cheap DVD, but it, it's not very good. Asian horror anthology of four short films. Uh, just the overall executions, just, uh, it's underwhelming stuff. I'll cover it when we get to, uh, this might be a 2015 release or 2014 release, so. Yeah. yeah. More people should watch them. If there were some reviews on, on Amazon, I may not have blind bought it, right? Next one again. This one was even more disappointing, I think. Judgment. Live or die. Make your choice. Boy, I've heard that somewhere before. This couldn't be a ripoff of Saw, could it? I doubt it. 
So an ex-boxer awakes in an unfamiliar room, chained from escape. Oh, oh I guess it is a rip-off of Saw, <laughs> and a not a good one at that, no. So, again, we've been covering a few movies. Japan released a lot of movies that are like, kids trapped in a school. Uh, South Korea did too, like with the Death Bell films. And then Japan released a whole bunch of them that we're beginning to cover in the playlist. And some of them are, are excellent, some of them are pretty bad. This one you can skip. I think I remember this one. Some dude had, like, a bazooka in this little room, and, like, he would shoot it, and it would barely cause any damage. <laughs> no. No. I took a bullet for you on that one. Don't, don't, don't watch Judgment. This one I covered, I think from the year 2000. Junk. This one isn't that bad. I can understand why people like this one. It's a zombie film. I think a bunch of gangsters meet up in, like, a warehouse or something. And zombies get on the loose. It's not bad. It has some good moments. Uh, some some gory moments. that uh, Some people really like this one, actually. But I've always been kind of... Just kind of lukewarm on it. And I've seen this one at least two or three times. I, give it a, I always give it an extra chance. Just because it's in my collection. And a after a while, you forget that you... You know, what exactly you didn't like about it. So, not terrible, but... You know, it could be worth watching. Now, the next four DVDs I'm very proud of, because these are the old-school, all-region DVD releases of Juon, the first Juon, uh, the first four uh, full-feature-length Juon films. First one being Juon the Curse. It is very difficult to find the, uh, these DVDs. Now, uh, we'll get to the theatrical films in a second. Obviously, this one was the first made-for-television film. And this one has Chiaki Kuriyama and uh, <clears throat> a couple of other actresses. Hitomi Miwa, I think, is in this. So you got some some recognizable actresses. This one is one of the best of the entire franchise. It's it's a little bit different from the other ones, too. Check out my review, Asian Horror Playlist video from 2000 for this one. This one focuses a lot on background scares, and real. it's even more subtle than the theatrical films, but it's really good. I really enjoyed this one. I cherish this DVD, since it's basically impossible to find nowadays. Then you have the second made-for-television film, Juon the Curse 2. It was also released in 2000. Again, as I said in my, my review... Half of this film are repeated scenes from Jewel and the Curse, and then the other half is kind of like decent uh, scenes from uh, new scenes, so to speak, related to the similar premise. And it's, it's you know, I don't think I gave it a pass grade or a, a recommendation in my uh, Asian Horror Playlist review, but obviously if you're obsessed with the series and you have a chance to pick this up, me as well. Again, this one, very hard to find now. These were floating around all the time back in the day, but I don't know. Uh, they're just out of print. <clears throat> I think the curse films, though, you, you should be able to find them somewhere streaming because they've been around for so long. Then we have the two theatrical films, of course. These are Remember, these are not the American releases. These are like the international all-region DVDs. Now, this one... <clears throat> is the most popular, I think, of the whole franchise, the grudge theatrical version. Again, very solid film. It's right up there with The Curse as being one of the best of the franchise, I think. I think this one was, re was released like in late 2002 in its home country. So check out my playlist review of that that year for my thoughts on this. Very creepy stuff, man. I really like these. And then finally... The one that I actually like the most in the entire franchise, and I'm in the minority on this one, Do You Own the Grudge 2? This one I thought, you know, had, had the same basic premise as all the other ones, but I thought the creativity here was really, was probably the highest out of all the films in the franchise. There's some really oddball stuff that happens in this, and it works. Some of the, some of the deaths in this are pretty... Get a little bloody and macabre as well. So yes, check out my Asian horror review from 2003 to see my thoughts on this one. But again, all four of those, I'm really glad I have those in my collection because it's it's hard to find those particular releases anymore. Of course, the two theatrical films are easily and widely available 
uh, in many regions, in new versions or whatever, or new DVD, I guess, releases. Then we have two of the lesser films in the Juon franchise, but they're still pretty good. Juon White Ghost and Black Ghost. I covered these when we did 2009 in my Asian Horror Playlist. So yeah, these are, uh, you know, these actually get a little bit more violent than some of the other Juon films, but the, there's something about them, I can't remember what my main criticisms were. I think maybe they were just a little bit cliched or something, I don't know, check out my review. These are good, but they're not as good as a lot of the other ones. Alright, next. This one's pretty, uh, pretty rare movie. Few people know about it. It is called Kaiden Restaurant, also known as Thriller Restaurant. And I have to consult my notes, my notes on this one. Now this one is a comedy horror film from 2010. I did not cover this in my Asian horror playlist video because I felt like it was too much of a comedy to be included. You know what I mean? As you can tell from the, the happy ghost on the cover. doesn't really shout horror. Maybe the mime on the back does, though. <laughs> so what is this one about? It begins actually with a 10-minute animated short film and then moves on to a 90-minute live-action version with a related storyline. So three high school kids travel to an abandoned restaurant in order to break a curse from the Grim Reaper. So it's pretty silly tone in this. I think it was targeted towards children mostly. Uh, but there is a lot of oddball characters and a lot of creativity and even a bit of unpredictability in terms of the type of ghosts and spirits these these uh, kids encounter. Um, you know, it's similar in some ways to the Gakono Kaiden franchise that we've been covering, but that was more of a horror-based franchise, even though they were a lot of fun and they had grammar school kids in them. This one's mostly a comedy with a little bit of horror, I guess, uh, a splash of horror. I remember the lead actress being really good, and there's a, there's actually an Onryo ghost that's used for comedic effect in this that was pretty funny. So I like that. I know there was one side character that annoyed me in this, but I think she dies like 30 minutes in, so you don't have to worry about her too long. But yeah, Kaiden Restaurant, not bad. Ah, another one. Another big one. I covered this in a separate review already. Kamikaze Girls. Check out my full full length review on my channel for my thoughts on this one. This movie's fantastic. This was before uh, Tetsuya Nakashima went dark and gave us Confessions and World of Kanako. So yeah, this is just this is a fantastic like coming of age girl friendship movie. Totally wacky, just over the top, and it's hilarious. And it's got good like. Uh, it's got a pretty good script to it and good character development, too. There's a lot of good stuff in this movie. It's very, very, like I said, wacky. It's really colorful. If you like colorful movies, check this sucker out. A lot of color in it, and it's uh, deceptively uh, deep, I would say. <clears throat> you get some interviews with the actresses here, not a whole lot more. Yeah, this is, this is a lot of fun. All right. Got a bunch of horror movies coming up again. Again, we got, of course, the uh, three-disc set of the Kazuo Umezu Manga Horror Theater Series. Yes. Covered all of these in 2005 in my playlist. You got House of Bugs and Diet. Of course, House of Bugs was directed by Kayoshi Kurosawa. He brings his unique flair to it. I liked this. I liked basically all of the short films in this this uh, this DVD release. You know, some of them are pretty cheesy, not particularly scary, but they're all very creative and different. This is disc two. That lady's kind of creepy. The snake woman. So here you have the snake girl and the wish about a killer doll. And the doll's nasty. Look, look at this guy. Look at that doll down there. Give Chucky a run for his money. I like this one a lot, too. Horrifying compilation, 50 years in the making. Then, of course, we have Disc 3. Which, of course, features our good friend Santa Claus. 
Yes. Santa Claus. There he is. He's quite angry. And then you have Deathmake, which is one of the weaker entries in this, this particular set, but very creative. The final shot in that one, despite the atrocious special effects, is quite different. Listen to this. Listen to the summary for present. College students are having a festive time at a Christmas party. That is, until Santa Claus shows up. He's made a list and he's checking it twice. If you've been naughty, you're gonna die. <laughs> like, come on, whoever wrote this, like they were they were moving along nicely and they just couldn't figure out how to end that 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 little uh, tagline. They're just like, you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, I really like. I always. I don't always rewatch these, but I rewatch these more often than you might think. They're just they're just fun to watch. Now another anthology set that isn't quite as much fun as Kazuo Umezu is the Kadokawa Mystery and Horror Tales, three volume set. So each of these discs has three short films, I believe, all about about a half an hour each. As I mentioned in my uh, reviews, I think these came out in 2002. Um <clears throat> You know, they're hit or miss, you know, like a lot of anthologies. This this is one of the more hit or miss anthology sets, but, you know, they have their positives and negatives. All of these DVDs kind of look the same here. I think the second DVD was my favorite, from what I remember. This one, again, you have Chiaki Kuriyama in it, in wooden clogs. And, uh... There was something about this set that made me purchase it. I think it was early last year I purchased this set. I just had, I really wanted to rewatch them again. Because it was, you know, it's one of those things where it's been 10 years since I've seen it. And, uh, yeah, they were, they were pretty good. So, again, you basically get nine short films in total with this set. And you could probably pick these up pretty cheap. Although, I... I the odd thing is that each of these DVDs varies in terms of availability, which doesn't make sense. They're all in the same... You know, they sell them separately, but they're in the same line, so they should all be of same availability. It didn't really make sense. One of them was, like, really cheap on Amazon. The other one was, like, 20 bucks on Amazon. So you might have to finagle uh, a series of purchases together to get the biggest price uh, savings option, I guess I would say. Now here, again, this is one of the earlier anime films that I saw, or one of the first anime films that I saw that really impressed me. Now this is the Karas, The Prophecy and Revelation. These are some pretty sweet anime films, man. The animation itself, really good quality. And it's basically about, it's kind of hard to describe the plot. I might have to do a separate review of this at some point. I probably will. You know, it's... Tokyo is a city populated by humans and ghostly beings. They exist in different dimensions, seen and unseen, but the balance between the dimensions starts to crumble. Is like uh, there's some nefarious uh, bad guys trying to destroy the world or consume it with the, the demon realm or whatever, or the spirit realm. There's some really cool action scenes in this. The main character here is pretty, uh, he's pretty vicious. He'll just, uh, some of his finishing moves are just spectacular too. And then you have Prophecy the Revelation, which you would assume would be the same movie, but it isn't. It's a continuation, of course, because this is basically one big two-part film. But this one moves a little bit slower. It focuses a little bit more on the dramatic aspects of it. This is uh, yeah, a very cool two-part anime film that I definitely recommend to you. It's got all the goods, you know, really good animation. It's got violence, blood. pretty good storyline you got to pay attention though the story in this you have to pay attention to you might have to watch it a few times to get all the details but it's uh solid stuff man and the last film tonight is one that i purchased recently again last october for halloween i think this is kidan piece of darkness let me check the title here yes it is kidan piece of darkness and this is an anthology, no subtitles available yet, I don't think. This is the unsubtitled version. But again, with short films, short horror films, do you really need them that much? I think you have 10 short films in this. Um, Koji Shiraishi directed a few of the short films, which is why I bought it, why I bought it. A few of the shorts are good, 
few of them not so good. This wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be, but I did find it to be watchable, and I will, I will cover each of these little shorts when we hit the Asian horror playlist from, uh, I forgot what year this came out, technically, I think 2014. All right, that's it tonight. We made good progress, and be sure to join me next time when we will continue this journey through my Japanese movies. And as always, we will see you next time.